Hello and welcome back to St. Peter's Church here in wonderful, although finally snowy, New York. We haven't had much snow this winter, only maybe 100 inches or, or just over. <clears throat> but next week promises to be more winter-like, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, on behalf of Father Bernie and myself, Father O'Brien, the pastor, we wanted to reach out and wish you a blessed and very meaningful Lent, as Lent started just the other day with Ash Wednesday, and, uh, and let you know that you're in our prayers uh, and ask you to please continue to pray for Father Bernie and for myself and for all the priests and our bishop here in the Diocese of Syracuse, that uh, as we perform the observances of Lent and the ceremonies of Holy Week, when Holy Week comes, that we too are able to make sure that it's a prayerful time of repentance, penance, and growth. Here at St. Peter's, nothing really going on since I talked to you last. We've got some great plans planned for the summer. We're going to work on the other window, the one behind the organ. There'll be more about that later. But we did have some interesting little things happen as we've been restoring the rectory. And so I thought I'd share those with you just as a, a way of uh, letting you know what's going on and what's happened here in your parish. Uh, this rectory was built in 1915. Uh, prior to that, the priests lived in um, a rectory that was built in the 1820s. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to stop the dog from chewing on his bone on the hardwood floors. And it's a little annoying, so I'll be right back. You just watch the fire and I'll be with you in a minute. Having a new dog has been a bit of a challenge. This dog is only eight. And uh, the last dog lived so long that I got used to her being quiet. And so Franz keeps me on my toes. As I mentioned, the rectory was built in the 1820s, the old rectory, and it remained the rectory for the priests. Uh, it was a private home. They bought the home in the 1840s and made it a rectory. And it was the rectory from 1841 or 42 uh, until 1914. And in 1914, this started to get built, this big house, and the priests finally moved in here. Uh, four priests at that time in 1915. So St. Peter's Church, we know, was started in 1836 by Father William Beecham, himself a refugee from the uh, hunger and the poverty in Ireland, uh, himself a convert, not born to Catholicism, but became a Catholic later in life, and then finally became a priest. And we've decided that after so many years of old wall-to-wall -wall carpets, uh, we would see what was under the carpets. The staff did all the work. I want to thank, and, and if you could keep in your prayers, a prayer of thanksgiving, Mark Lagasse and Jerry Marsh and the Gotti brothers, Vito and John. They did all the work on the hardwood floors uh, themselves. Beautiful hardwood floors underneath those carpets. As we were restoring the rectory, we began to find things that hadn't been touched based on the amount of dust, I'll bet you, in 40 years. Among the things we found, things I had been looking for and no one knew where they were, were the very first records of St. Pat Peter's Church here in Rome. These two books, Marriages and Births, are both dated 1837. I'm going to show the book up to the camera and the cameraman might be able to zoom in. Written in hand of our first pastor, Father William Beecham, is the information that he was appointed pastor on August 3rd, 1837. He was just an administrator and kind of a missionary pastor before that. And the very first baptism here at St. Peter's was on August 5th, 1837. Betsy Sullivan, not Sullivan, Sullivan. And the very first wedding that ever occurred, Catholic wedding, here in the city of Rome, which wasn't called Rome at that time, was on September 24th. Dan and his wife, Anne, were married on September 24th, 1837. And so you can see that in the beautiful handwriting back then that Father Beecham had, and each notation is signed by Father Beecham, and these books go from 1837 up until 
1845, and then uh, newer books were started. So we found those books, the weddings from the 1840s and 50s, all the way up, all the way up to the 1870s, where I knew we had the books kept in our safe. These will be on display when we get our museum room finally put together. Until then, I'm going to talk to the Rome Historical Society and some other antique book dealers to see how these books can be better preserved. Another thing we found, and it's dated 1917, so it's, uh, it's a little limited, is a list of deceased veterans who belonged to St. Peter's Church. So World War I would not be counted because this was compiled in 1917 by L.S. Abrams of the Fort Stanwix Camp, number 58. And in our cemetery, and in this little package, is listed uh, the names, when they were born, what regiments they were in, and when they died, from the War of the Revolution, the Indian War of 1795, the War of 1812, the Mexican War of 1845, the American Civil War, the Spanish-American War, and also Sons of Veterans, buried at St. Peter's and at St. Mary's Cemeteries, Rome, New York. And an entire compilation. This obviously isn't the original. At some point, somebody copied it. Uh, but uh, we were very happy to find that with pictures and maps and what section and what grave. Uh, so a lot of history here at St. Peter's, and not just of St. Peter's, but of the city of Rome. History is important. Knowing where we came from is important so that we can understand where we are and where we're going. Our spiritual life is no different. All of us have come from good families, I'm sure. Parents who, while they may have had their difficulties, did love us as best they could. They've helped us to become, through the good things they've done and, and maybe the mistakes they've made, they've helped us to become the good people that we are today. We know where we're from and we know where we are. We have this wonderful season of Lent to help us to continue to discern in prayer and with fasting where we're going as Christians, moving ever closer to the light and to the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. I look forward to walking that path with you this Lent in prayer and in our liturgies. And I'll end as I began. Please know of my prayers and please keep myself Father Bernie, the priests and our bishop here in the Diocese of Syracuse in your prayers. We'll see you again around Easter time. God bless.